Tacoma. Welcome back to your TV classroom. Let's check in with our zones today. Let's do that. One zone check-in coming right up. Thank you, Mr. Kevin. Mm -hmm. Take a moment to decide how you're feeling. What's your body doing? What's your brain doing? What are your emotions doing? And I'm gonna count down from three to zero. And when I get to zero, you're going to act out your emotion with one movement over and over and over again. Kind of like it's being played on repeat or like a boomerang, if you've seen those. Oh, so you're okay. just gonna do the same action over and over to see if you can determine how each other is feeling and how we are feeling here on the TV classroom. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. You ready, Mr. Kevin? Ready. Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> oh, that was so fun. We're like a live GIF. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what we were doing. Friends, did you do it? I think that might be my new favorite way to do it. That was really creative. Okay, friends, how are we feeling on the TV classroom today? I think we're yeah. all green. We're, we're good all to green. go. We're good to go. Yeah. Let's check in with our personal standards then. Today and every day, we agree to show, show respect, respect, make, make good, good decisions, decisions, and solve problems. And one way we show respect is by honoring our indigenous lands and people. And we do that when we take the space and the time to look outside the window, look at the sky, the trees, your surroundings. Our physical space stands on the historical and ancestral I'm going to start that sentence over. Our physical space stands on the historical on ancestral lands of the Puyallup tribe of Indians. We acknowledge the Puyallup tribe of Indians community, their elders, both past and present, as well as future generations. Thank you, Ms. Aslan. You're welcome. We have something really exciting today. How can we show empathy at the zoo? We're going to the zoo. Oh. We're going to the zoo. We're gonna learn about showing empathy at the zoo. Empathy. Empathy. Hold on to that. We and- learned a lot about empathy. We're gonna think about why do we need to know about invasive species? Oh. Invasive species. Well, empathy is treating and understanding others and their perspectives and treating them the way they wanna be treated. Sometimes people think that it means to feel sorry for someone. Mm. I used to think that, mm -hmm. and I used to think I had to feel sorry for everybody, and that was not mm -mm. good. No. It did not make me a very happy person. No, and I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me. Right. I don't, that's not how I want to be treated. No. What I want is people to share another's feeling, situation, or attitude. So just acknowledge and be with you in the moment. Exactly, yeah. that's showing empathy. I show empathy when I pick up my trash. Yeah. Be I show empathy when my friend is sad and I just sit next to them and listen. Yes. So today we're going to think about how can we show empathy, share another's feelings, situations, or attitude at the zoo. Pause your video and think about that for a moment. And when you press play, tell us what you were thinking. Oh. oh. We've got animals there that are in cages mm -hmm. and that's not how animals are supposed to be mm -mm. but we're going to learn about why maybe that is mm -hmm. and how we can show empathy yes hmm. that's exciting it is invasive species some of our students have learned about invasive mm -hmm. species of plants yes mm -hmm. when we went to swan creek mm -hmm. we and when we that. went to the nature center yes we learned about why it's important we now did. for those of us who need a reminder about what invasive species are you might think that it's something that takes over. It invades. It can. It's a non-native plant or animal that dominates a habitat. So it comes in as like, oh, you thought you were the ruler of this habitat. <laughs> Just kidding, it's me. Blackberries. That's right. Did you know blackberries are not native to here, but man, they are everywhere. Yeah, they are. So blackberries are an invasive species in Washington. They're not native to here. They don't occur here naturally. Nope. Something happened that introduced them here and if we're not careful, they will Now, dominate. huckleberries and blueberries occur here naturally, mm -hmm. but not blackberries. So, we get to go on a field trip, and we have some amazing partnerships with our Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. And they've created these videos for so us excited. here in Tacoma. Mm -hmm. Think about showing empathy and thinking about invasive species. 
So let's take a moment and say thank you to our partnerships thank at the Point so Defiance much. Zoo we and Aquarium. So excited to share this with the students of Tacoma. Yes. Now I don't remember if in this video they may mention a certain school's name because mm -hmm. they filmed for some schools as well. If it says that, just know that it's meant for all of Tacoma. Yeah. Keep in mind the questions that we introduced. How can we show empathy at the zoo? And why do we need to know about invasive species? Why is that important? Most importantly, mm. have fun. That's right. Have a great time, friends, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Hey, wildlife champions. Welcome to our Oak Tree Park video this month. And this month, we're doing something a little bit different than normal. Instead of checking out the park or other parks around Tacoma, we are actually gonna stay right here at the zoo. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to get to meet some of the animals that live here at the zoo and see how our animal keepers show empathy for those animals. And if you remember, empathy is being able to put yourself in the shoes of that animal. And our keepers do that every day. They make sure the animal has food, water, shelter, space, and they always think, hmm, how would my animal feel in this habitat? So let's go check out some really cool animals and meet some keepers. Hello, wildlife students. My name is Heather, and I work here in the Budgie Aviary at Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. Um, uh, we are here to show you how to care for our budgies and build empathy for them. And we've done a couple of things to help show off our, our wonderful care here. We've given our budgies some enrichment, so you can see a couple of our birds up here checking out these ferns, some new perching that's nice and wet, and this bamboo up here. And that's something that makes their day interesting and fun, and it helps exhibit natural behaviors. So they're doing uh, a little bit of bathing behavior. You see them flapping around in there. We also uh, have given them some tasty snacks back here. They're all together as a group, but these are a flocking bird. So their whole life is like a big game of follow the leader. So they seem they have some tasty snacks back there, and they're enjoying them. I did also want to share with you guys that each and every one of these birds, we have 150 of them, and we care for them very much as individuals here at Point Defiance. And each and every bird does have a name. We can identify them with little bracelets that you might see on their leg, and they, you know when they all hatch, who their parents are, all of that information for them so they can, we can give them the best care possible here at Point Defiance. We thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks. Hello, everyone at Arlington Elementary. My name is Sarah, and I am a zookeeper here at Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium in the Wild Wonders Outdoor Theater. And this is my friend, Forrest. Forrest is a Eurasian eagle owl, which is the largest type of owl in the entire world. Now, Forrest does have a cousin that lives right around here in Washington, um, and that is the Great Horned Owl. And you probably saw the resemblance right away because just like his cousin, he's got those really cool ear tufts uh, on the top of his head. So those feathers kind of look like ears, and that's why they're called ear tufts, but they're actually not his ears. They're just feathers. And scientists aren't 100% sure what they're for. They could just be decorative because of course he does look very handsome with those ear tufts. Um, they might help to actually direct sound to his ears. Um, he's got great big ears. You just can't see them because they're hiding underneath the feathers uh, and they're just right behind his eyes. So scientists don't know for sure why they've got those ear tufts, but they certainly are distinctive and I think they make him look very, very handsome. You can also see that Forrest has beautiful orange eyes. His cousin, the great horned owl, has great big yellow eyes, which are also really amazing in their own way. Now, Forrest here has never lived out in the wild. He has always lived at a zoo. Eurasian eagle owls like this are in the wild are found in the northern parts of Europe and Asia, 
where it's cold pretty much all the time. So they've got feathers from the tip of their head down to the tip of their talons practically. So you can see he's got feathers all the way down onto his feet. So even though today is a fairly brisk day for us here, um, it's pretty chilly for me, Forrest doesn't mind at all because his feathers keep him so nice and toasty warm. So as I mentioned, he has never lived out in the wild. He was hatched at another zoo and he came here to be one of our ambassador animals. So he has been around people his entire life. He got here when he was about nine months old. So he was still very much a baby at that point in time, but he was his adult size. He was just about as big as this when he came here. But his feathers were a little bit different. They were a little bit fluffier. And the first time uh, that he was, uh, the, when he first came to the zoo, he had to be in quarantine, which means he lived up at our healthcare building. But we would go up and visit him every day and we would just spend time with him. I remember one time we were just hanging out. He was sitting on my lap and I was reading a newspaper and it looked like he was reading the newspaper with me. Now, sometimes people have heard the phrase wise old owl. So you'd think, oh yeah, a wise old owl would read the newspaper. But it's kind of funny because they're actually not that smart. I mean, not the way that we think of smart, where you're like problem solving and coming up with new ways to do things. Owls are very instinct driven and Forrest is no exception to that. He does things the same way over and over again because it's very effective. So owls like this are nighttime hunters. They come out at night, they use their excellent senses of hearing and vision to find their prey and then they swoop down and they grab it with their great big claws that are called talons. One squeeze will kill it and they'll take it back to their perch and then they'll just swallow it whole. Now this works out for them. It works out pretty much every time they need it to work out. So they don't have to come up with like a different way of finding their food. So because of that, they're not as smart as some other types of birds like crows or ravens. Crows and ravens have to come up with different strategies for finding their food all the time. Plus, crows and ravens have really complicated social groups. So they've got friends and family and they have to interact with each other uh, as well. Owls, not so complicated. They do usually have a mate, um, but that's really the only other owl that they hang out with. So they don't really need to come up with different ways to hang out with other owls. So all of that combined means that when we need to teach Forrest how to do something new, it takes a long time. So Forrest is 15 years old now, which makes him about middle-aged for this type of owl. They can live about 30 years or so in a zoo. And he still is learning how to do things here at the theater. Um, things like flying in our show, uh, but he is very good at the things that we've taught him how to do because it's kind of part of his routine. So you see, he's very good at sitting here and looking handsome. And we're very proud of him for that. So Arlington Elementary students, I hope you enjoyed getting this chance to meet Forrest and to learn a little bit about his life here at the zoo. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Hello wildlife champions, my name is Jessie and this is Titan the Rhinoceros Iguana here at Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium. We are just calling to say hi and thank you for learning about all the different animals at the zoo. Titan is a type of iguana that is found on islands in the Caribbean. This type is found on the island of Hispaniola and Mona Island. Um, but all around the Caribbean, there are different types of iguanas. I think most of us are familiar with green iguanas, which are the types that are found on the mainland. But each group of islands in the Caribbean has its own kind of iguana. Islands in general are really special because a lot of times the animals that are, live on those islands are only found on those islands and nowhere else in the world. 
So that is true of rhinoceros iguanas. You can see he gets the name rhinoceros iguana from the little horn on his nose. And as he gets older, that will get bigger. You can also see he's a really good climber. Rhinoceros iguanas spend a lot of time on the beach or climbing around on the rocks. And um, they are super good at it. I have his diet here where they live on the island. Has a lot of different brushy plants and a little bit of cactus. So his diet reflects that. He's got some parsnip and some squash and a few peas as well. But I also brought him his favorite thing today. We'll see he, if he wants to enjoy this. His favorite thing are blueberries. So I'm gonna offer him a blueberry. We'll see if he wants that. Usually he'll stick his tongue out to smell it first and then he might lick it up. When we got Titan, he fit in the palm of my hand, including his tail. He was really, really tiny. He was probably right after he hatched. And the reason that we got Titan, because he's an endangered iguana, somebody actually tried to smuggle him into the United States to sell as a pet. And that is illegal because they are an endangered type of iguana. So, Titan came to live here at the zoo instead, um, but he couldn't go back out in the wild because he'd already been around people and been used to people feeding him. So taking animals out of the wild, especially endangered animals, um, is not good to have them as pets because we need those animals out in the wild. Like I said, islands are really special places and if we take the animals off of those islands to sell as pets, there won't be any left in the wild and they'll probably be threatened with extinction. So this type of iguana is an endangered type of iguana, but out of all terrestrial vertebrates, 41% that are found on islands are endangered. So um, it's, it's important to make sure that islands are really well protected. One other thing that we do that Titan really likes is he loves bath time. And I think that he's actually thinking about heading, oh, he's, he's stealing some of his friend's food actually right now, but I think he wants to go take a bath. So he, we're gonna take him out the door and we're gonna give him a little soak. So Titan's enjoying a little bath now. In the wild, rhinoceros iguanas would crawl into shallow pools of water. And that just helps keep his skin hydrated. He's got a pool in his house, but it's not as warm as um, a pool would be that's been sitting in the sunshine for a while. So we give him some nice warm water. It's not quite as warm as a bathtub like you think of. It's about 80 to 85 degrees. So to us, it feels kind of just like lukewarm, but to him that feels nice and toasty. So he soaks in that for a while so that his skin is nicely hydrated and when he sheds, it comes off really nicely. It doesn't get stuck to his body. When he's in there, sometimes we'll also give him a little bit of scrubby so that, and usually he really enjoys it, um, so that just to simulate kind of like plant and sand that would be brushing across him as he's swimming around. Iguanas are really good swimmers. They kind of swim, it looks like an alligator or a crocodile. Well, they use their body in an S shape and kind of push themselves along with their tail. You can see right here, the skin is kind of coming off, peeling a little bit. I'm not gonna pull on it, but if, if it comes off on its own, that's all right. and show empathy to them. Yeah, I know, I sure learned a lot about empathy by talking to our keepers and seeing how they provide the animals here at the zoo with all the food, water, shelter, and space, and even the mental stimulation and socialization that they need to be happy. 
I sure learned a whole bunch and I hope you did too. And have a good day. We'll see you really soon. Rules. One, you have 10 seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, you will get points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, you will get bonus points if you hit a grand slam. Five, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Six, use your math skills to see how many points you can get. Good luck.
You're killing me, Smalls. seconds to pick your crewmate. Two, a new timer will appear with an exercise for the crewmate you picked. Three, you will get points for each correct crewmate and exercise you choose. Four, you will get bonus points if you find Maui's hook. Five, if you pick the imposter, you will lose all your points. Six, use your math skills to see how many points you can get. Good luck. Good <laughs> luck. 